In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this torn paper effect using Photoshop. So let's get started. Hey, what's up, guys? Drool here, back with another video, and as you can see, this is the final output. So to create this effect, first of all, let's open the background photo. So I'm going to go to File, Open, and select this portrait. Open it. Now first we need to get rid of the side portions because we only need the model so I'm going to select my crop tool but here I will turn off my delete crop pixels so I don't lose my image so I'm going to go and crop it here like this and this very good then go and confirm it now I need to move the picture a little bit so I'm going to select my move tool here and use my arrow keys so okay that looks perfect after that go and apply a layer mask and then select your brush tool and in the brush uh, I'm gonna use this torn paper brushes and if you want to use them the download link is in description so use them so first let's go and select let's say this one this looks good and after that I'm gonna go and make it a little bit smaller and do a click something like this but in the color before you do the click make sure it's black color here and you are clicking on your layer mask so everything ready then do a click let's make it a bit smaller and looking good but uh, I want to make it a bit more triangular instead of this uh, straight ripoff so I'm gonna go and use the same brush but in the options here I'm gonna go and rotate it a little bit like this let's see how it looks here okay that looks nice and since we want to bring some portion back I'm gonna go and change it to white color and then do a click like this and a bit more and now same with the bottom part so I'm gonna go and rotate it something like this okay that looks all right and then do a click a bit more here as well and a bit more okay this looks good now go and close it now we can add the background image so I'm gonna go to file and here go and select place linked and here open the image that you wanna put behind your model so I'm gonna go and place it then go and confirm it and this picture needs to be behind the model so put the layer behind the model and we're good now select a move tool and move her a little bit here now obviously it's way too small so I'm gonna go and press ctrl T hold my alt and shift key and drag it from a corner like this and then put her like this here okay looking good now we can make the background image black and white so for that go and create new adjustment layer and select black and white and make sure that it is exactly on top of your background layer here okay that's good then close it now let's also add some contrast so for that go to your adjustment layer and this time select curves and make it a little bit brighter from the top here and keep it down here so we have nice darkness in the shadows and okay looking good and then lift up this corner from here sweet now go and close it uh, now let's add some shadows to give more depth now let's add some shadows here to give more depth to the background image now now I'm gonna now I'm gonna add some shadows here to create more depth between foreground and background image so for that select a brush tool and go and create a new blank layer and in the brush go and select a really soft round brush this one and then make your brush a bit smaller like this and in the color make sure you have black color and also make sure that you are painting on your blank layer and it is under the foreground image okay so we're ready and now paint exactly here not here but here so you only have a bit fading effect on the model and also add okay that's way too much so I'm gonna go and make the brush really small so it doesn't spread too much so, okay cool now if I turn it on and off as you can see we have better focus on the eyes and there's more depth base effect is ready but since we are going for a torn paper effect there needs to be a little bit of white space here and there to make it more realistic let me explain what I mean so to do that go and create new blank layer and again this will be under your main model right so on this blank layer we have to fill in white color so make sure the color here is white then select a paint bucket right click and paint bucket and fill it so as you can see here this entire layer is white and we have this layer 0 the foreground model on the top now we only need this white paper on the edges okay 
So for that, again, select your brush tool and in the brush, go back to your tone paper brushes. So you can select any one there. They are all really good. So I'm going to select this one here and then make it really, really small. Now what we are going to do is make all the white color disappear for a moment, okay? So to do that, make sure your layer two is active and after that, hold your Alt key and Option if you are using Apple. So hold your Alt key and do a click on your layer mask. The white color is still there, it's just invisible for a moment. So we're gonna bring it back, but only where we need it. So to do that, make sure your color here is white and you're using your paper brush and click on the layer mask here. So I'm gonna make it a bit smaller and then do a click like this and as you can see we have really nice white edge and to get around the corners you can do the same trick click here and then rotate your brush a little bit and then you can do the clicks like this So this is looking all right and of course the more time you spend the better the final output will be. So for now it looks all right and as you can see the edges here they blend in a little too much so I'm gonna apply some shadow effect to separate them. So first of all activate your layer 0 here, right click here and select blending options and here I'm gonna go and turn on drop shadow. In the drop shadow my mode is multiply color black. The opacity you can keep it between 40 to 50 so let's say 45 looks all right. In the distance it's 4 uh, spread 0 so we have really nice sharp shadow and in the size I'm gonna keep it too. Uh, you can go and increase the opacity a little bit more so it's visible from the distance. So let's try 50, looks alright, hit OK. And apply the same effect on your white layer. So activate layer 2, right click and select blending options. Here go and click on drop shadow and in the drop shadow as you can see these are the same numbers and then hit OK. So this way if I zoom in as you can see we have really nice shadow effect to separate things from one another. So the final effect is ready and now let's do some color correction and for that activate your layer 0. Then go to your adjustment layers and select vibrance. And add some colors to it so I'm gonna go and keep it somewhere around 40, 45 so 42 looks good. Close it. Now go and create another adjustment layer and this time select curves and make it a bit brighter from here not too much and keep the shadows down to have more contrast and then I'm gonna go and lift up the shadows from here to give it more hazy look so this looks fine and perfect let's make it a bit more bright cool and close it so that's it and this is the final output and since everything is in mask and adjustment layers you can change it to your taste however you like so I really hope that you guys learned something from this video and if you did hit that like button and if you have any kind of questions or suggestions feel free to ask me in comment section below. If you are new here you can click on any of these boxes to check out more videos by me or you can click on that subscribe button so every time I upload a new video you will get the update plus clicking on that subscribe button will take you to my youtube channel where I have tons of workshop tutorials waiting for you. So till then goodbye take care and have some fun with photoshop.